So if you've been watching HuffPost Live lately, you may have shared a few thoughts about drones, but drones aren't the only way the technology is changing military and police operations. For some dramatic proof, consider the new military-grade robot dog developed by DARPA. It walks, it's strong, and it won't let you knock it over. So just imagine some of those patrolling Afghanistan or maybe even your streets. So how concerned should we be about where this kind of technology is taking us in our endless quest for greater security? Joining us on set to discuss, we've got HuffPost science correspondent, Kara Santa Maria. Does this thing freak you out? There's, there's one of them, <laughs> the latest version, that it runs faster than Usain Bolt does. I find Alpha Dog uh, and Big Dog both to be pretty scary. I think Alpha Dog is, is even scarier. The, the one thing that keeps me from being totally terrified is that not all of these robots are fully self-contained. So they require a lot of power. So like the Usain Bolt one is connected to some hydraulics that you can't see off stage in the video for that. Um, but they're pretty scary. I don't think they're scary at all. I think they're beautiful, especially if you look at some of the old videos of Big Dog. There's a video of it on the ice, and it slips and catches itself, and it, its legs make it look exactly like maybe like a baby horse or some kind of uh, animal, and, and it's got a, like that animal grace that we don't associate with robots. It's responding in a, in a way that is graceful, and that's just something we're not used to seeing from robots but it's something that we're going to be seeing a lot more of. Yeah, I mean, this, it, is, this is how I think I, a lot of new robotics are shaping up, is, is this biomimicry idea, which is let's look to nature, let's look to how things evolve to kind of have this refined grace and, and to interact with the environment in, in probably the, the best way that evolution would allow it to do and, and see how we can probe program that into our robotics. A robot on the battlefield may not be operating with compassion, but it's also not going to be operating with anger, vengeance, shame. Um, and it could be in a position where it's going to be more of able to sacrifice its own life if, if it's in a scenario where it cannot act ethically in a place where a human being would, would fight you know, to live through whatever they're doing and p potentially do unethical things in order to, uh, to save their own life. Yeah, I think people sometimes forget the limits of human beings. They say, well, we should have humans doing all the battling because humans have compassion and so forth. But you do have to realize that human beings have their own moral limitations. How is it that soldiers, uh, the veterans, really view some of these new developments? Anything that's going to protect them, uh, they're all for that. Uh, anything that's going to keep casualties down, they're, they're for that. But I believe, just from my own personal experience, that a robot is still just a machine. They're, they're not taking ethical responsibility for their actions. A, a human, even in, in drones, uh, drone aircraft, we have to take responsibility for what destruction that causes. And I, I don't think there's any code that is going to take responsibility for, you know, for a decision that's made. And I don't think that we can ever place that on a robot and say, well, a robot made that choice. Well, <laughs> we've made that choice to build the robot. So... Morally, ethically, philosophically, there's just there's a lot of answers. 